So this video is all about cleaning up your books for taxes. And I have a confession. Last year, 2020, my books were not in great condition and I had kind of sort of glazed over them and I was dealing with lots of other things and I, I sent them to my CPA and then I, cause remember I guys, I don't do my own taxes. Um, I sent them to my CPA and then they had like a lot of comments and I was pretty embarrassed. I was like, oh my gosh, I should have like done more due diligence before I just handed these over. So this year I said, no, not again, never. I am going to get on it. I'm actually gonna file my taxes early this year and we're gonna get on it. And so I did, by January 3rd, my books were pristine, pristine. Okay. So, I mean, not to brag, but like they were looking really good. I was like, I need to show these to people because they are so beautiful. Um, but I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to walk you guys through what I did and I'm not going to get into my numbers. I'm not going to show you my financials today. I'm still a little embarrassed. I can't quite get there yet. Um, but what I want to do is I'm going to walk you through the process of what I did. Okay. So, um, this is going to be short and sweet. I don't want to get too much into it. The year is over and now now it's, you know, let's make sure we've closed our books and let's also make sure that things are clean. One of the most frustrating things is to get financials and then realize that there's something that's been sitting there on the books that actually was from years and years and years ago and never got cleaned up. And it's quite annoying when you come in and then you want to fix it because it messes up the current year financials if you have to do adjusting journal entries and it, it kind of causes a lot of problems. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that our financials are looking nice and clean and that we can point to exactly what the balances are for every single thing on the balance sheet and that our P&L makes sense when we look at it, okay? And then it's actually giving us the information we want to see and that we don't have a lot of stuff that's kind of put into weird classifications, all right? So the first thing that I did is that I went through and made sure that all my transactions had been entered for the year. So um, any bank account that might just have a few little pennies of interest here and there, or a PayPal account that doesn't get touched very often or anything, obviously the main bank accounts and the main credit cards, I made sure that all the transactions were included, okay? So you go to your bank feeds, if you're using QuickBooks Online, you go to your bank feeds and you make sure that everything's there. Um, and then once you know that everything is there, that's what we call complete. We say, hey, it's complete. Then you can go and look for accuracy. So what we do is we review the P&L and the balance sheet. And the first thing that I do is I go through and I'm ruthless on anything that says uncategorized. If there's an uncategorized expense account or there's an uncategorized asset or an uncategorized liability, I am looking, I am finding what that thing is and I'm moving it to the right place. I don't want anything uncategorized. It needs to be in the right bucket on the PL or the right bucket in the balance sheet. And if there's not a proper classification such for something, I go ahead and create the account and I put it in the right place. We do not need anything in uncategorized. And I also want you guys to be really ruthless on anything that's miscellaneous as well. Okay. We want to keep a lot of stuff out of miscellaneous. We want to put names to things. We really need to know what we spent money on and what we own on the balance sheet or owe. Everything needs a category. So make sure it's got a place to go. Everything in its place. This is the time that you make sure everything is in its place. And then we spend some time and we wanna look at the balance sheet. So the balance sheet is the thing that gets, really it gets um, forgotten about a lot. And I don't want you guys to forget about the balance sheet and the tax accountant is not gonna forget about your balance sheet, okay? They focus on the P&L, but the balance sheet is still very important as well. So sometimes what happens is a bookkeeper or something will make a transaction and then it will have a balance sheet effect and then it will never get looked at again because people focus on the profit and loss statement, they focus on that P&L or the income statement, all of those are synonymous. Um, and then there might be an uncategorized asset sitting there or maybe an old accounts receivable balance, an old accounts payable balance, or maybe you know, some kind of liability from an employee or, I mean, I've seen all sorts of crazy stuff on the balance sheet. You know, random things like loans from shareholders that never really were loans from shareholders and all this kind of stuff that you, what you really need to do is you need to look at your balance sheet and you need to say, what is that? So if you, if there's a bank account, there should be a bank 
attached to it where you could go back and see the statement balance. If there's an asset, you should be able to go and find that asset. So if there's a piece of furniture on there, you need to be able to go and say, I still own that piece of furniture. And if you don't own that piece of furniture anymore, it needs to go. It needs to be off of your books as well as the related depreciation. So this is where you go and you say, what is this? What is this? What is this? What is this? Okay. And I know a lot of you guys will have something like petty cash on your balance sheet and it might have $150 in it. But if I were to ask you, hey, where's that petty cash of $150? You might say, oh, we spent it on meals, like blah, blah, blah. We don't actually have any petty cash anymore. Okay. Well, you need to clean it up off the books because if you can't identify it and find it, then it needs to be gone. So what you would do in that situation is you would create a journal entry, put that to expense, whatever you spent the money on, meals in that case, and then take it off of the balance sheet. So you'd have a debit and a credit. So if you don't know how to do debits and credits, please just talk to your accountant and say, hey, I don't have petty cash anymore. I don't know how to clean it up. I use the money on meals. And then somebody will, will be able to help you with that. Okay, so go to your balance sheet and say, what is this, what is this, what is this, what is this? And then confirm the values, okay? So that's where you go back and you look at statements or you try to figure out exactly what assets you have or your inventory. If you have inventory, that's where you go, okay, do I actually have all this inventory? You need to be doing an inventory count towards the end of the year as close as possible to the end of your fiscal year so that you can get accurate inventory counts on your balance sheet. Inventory is a place that gets messed up, I'd say probably more than most places in the accounting system. So make sure you get that inventory count done and adjust those inventory balances to make sure that they're more accurate, okay? The next thing that you would do, now I didn't have any inventory, but I'm just reminding you when you're looking at your balance sheet, there's gonna be an inventory item there if you do have inventory. And so make sure that that's reconciling back to physically what is available and what you could actually sell. And remember to write off anything that's obsolete or trash or it's spoiled or anything like that, okay? This can be a time where you can kind of get some tax savings in too and write more of that stuff off as a cost of goods sold or spoilage or whatever it is. The next thing that you wanna do is you wanna reconcile all your balance sheet accounts. And I've used the word reconcile, but I literally mean like reconcile in your accounting system where you use the reconciliation tool and you actually go and you put your statement beginning and ending balance and you get in there as of 1231, of the year, December 31st, and you get all of your statements and you reconcile every single bank account, credit card, loan statement, anything that you can tie back to some sort of statement, please, please, please do it. And actually like click the reconciliation, go ahead and do a reconciliation report because this will identify if you have anything in the system that shouldn't be there. So if you accidentally had a duplicate transaction, that could be throwing off your numbers or maybe you are missing a deposit or it could, it could reveal a lot of things to you about your accounting system. So please make sure you reconcile all of those balance sheet accounts. The next thing you would want to do is you would want to clean up income statement accounts. So once you are feel like the balance sheet is looking good, you want to go to the income statement and this is a great time to just do some cleanup, do some housekeeping. This is where you can add any accounts that you wanted to, to make, make your, um, make your books look cleaner or help you understand them more. You can reclassify any income that you don't like where it is. So let's say, um, you know, your, like in my situation, I had some CFO services that were put into a different bucket uh, accidentally. So we needed to move those to CFO services to make sure that it's all reporting in the right place. Or maybe some commissions that were earned were put into miscellaneous income when they really should have been in the commissions section. You know, things like that. You wanna make sure that, that you go through every single bucket of your income statement and you say, does this look right? And I'd say, take the time, go into your accounting system. If you have one, please tell me you do. Go into your accounting system, click on something and look at all the transactions and say, do these look right? Should these be here? If they aren't, then move them to the appropriate account, okay? Because these are the types of things that will help you as you're establishing your budget for the next year. This will help you as you're making decisions. So you don't want expenses in the wrong buckets because you might, hopefully, you're using that information to help you make other decisions. So garbage in, garbage out. We wanna make sure that our, our income and our numbers and our expenses are in the right places so that we are making the right decisions on 
you know, what to do in the future. So another thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that, that um, we're not using any of those uncategorized and that there's nothing in ask my accountant <laughs> or uncategorized or um, miscellaneous, you know, all of these things where sometimes people don't know what to do and a bookkeeper might just throw an expense somewhere, but most of the time we can put it into a bucket. Okay. So in a, in a bucket that seems more appropriate, if you do have something in miscellaneous, make sure it's not a huge amount. Like, you know, if you are making a hundred thousand dollars a year, you know, having 20 to a hundred dollars in your miscellaneous expense accounts doesn't really matter, but you wouldn't want to have a $50,000 item into miscellaneous. We need to know what you're spending $50,000 on, right? So just do some reorganization. There's, it's a perfect time to do it. You can reclassify accounts really, really easily and move them into the right bucket. Change any names of accounts you don't like. You know, I had um, one client that was doing like therapy services and the revenue line item said consulting services. And I was like, why does this say consulting services? Like it's not consulting that we're doing here. So we changed the name of the account. Very, very simple thing to do in your chart of accounts. You can go and edit the name, super easy, but it's a really good time to change anything that you're like, hey, that account name has never made sense to me, but I've just always used it. This is a good time to do that. Now, if you're gonna be changing names of accounts, make sure you communicate that to your bookkeeper so you, they don't get confused. But if you're going to do that, now is a great time to do it and just make your P&L look, look like, I really understand what's in this bucket. You know what I mean? And then this is just a time to reorganize. So if you don't like the order of your P&L, you can shift things around. You can use subcategories and categories to sort of organize. So if you want all of your office expenses together or all your payroll expenses together, you can use things like numbering or um, formatting to be able to um, you know, group those things together. Um, remember that QuickBooks will use things, do things alphabetically unless you use your account numbers and then the account numbers will go in order. So it'll default to whatever order the account numbers are in, that's the order that the P&L will be in. So I really like using account numbers in QuickBooks Online for that so that I can reorder things the way that I like to see them. And then the last thing that I did when I was going through my own P&L is I, I made sure that my payroll reports and my contractor reports out of Gusto tied to my P&L. So I made sure that my payroll taxes tied to my, my payroll reports. And I also made sure my gross wages tied to my payroll reports because that was one thing last year that I had them all lumped together. And the, the CPA said, hey, we need to break this out. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can do that so quick. I don't know why I didn't have that done. And so that's something that I made sure to do. So that saves my CPA some time so they don't have to do that. And then it's just a quick check the box for them. I will get a gold star and they'll say, hey, she's a good client, <laughs> we'll keep her on. As you guys know, CPAs are kind of hard to come by right now. And so there is a little bit of like, you know, you don't want to be the super mess. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to be the super mess. You want to make it easier for them and they, you don't want them to feel like they have to keep raising their rates on you too because you're the one who takes all the time, <laughs> okay? And you don't wanna get kicked off their client roster because a lot of clients, a lot of CPAs will just say, I don't wanna work with that person anymore because they've got the next person to fill their slot. These are my tips for you. I would highly recommend it. It would be great. Your CPA will definitely thank you. And well, your CPA might not thank you, but they'll think it. <laughs> they'll think it to themselves. They'll go, wow, this was actually way easier than the year before. And you will have cleaner, better books that are more reliable and will help you in your planning for your business. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. If this was helpful, please give the video a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. And feel free to share this video with anybody else who you think might benefit. All right. Thanks so much, you guys. Bye.